Mikhail is a Minnesota pork shop owner and TikTok creator. Earlier this autumn, he posted videos based on an album of photos taken during Imperial Japanese Army massacres in China during World War II. Kel's videos went viral, garnering over 51.6 million views on TikTok. This led to threats against him and his business, and he has worn a bulletproof vest ever since. How did he get the photo album? Why did he decide to post videos online and share the stories? How much does he know about the related history? What happened to the album, and did it find an appropriate home? Today, Evan Kel is my guest. Hello, Evan. Thank you so much for taking the interview and share your stories. Thank you so much for taking this interview. So I would like to you to have a like short、uh, self introduction first. My name is Evan Kale. I am 33 years old. I live in Minnesota in the United States. I am the owner of St. Louis Park Gold and Silver.、Uh, I am the internet personality known as Pawn Man. We don't do pawn here. It's just a name. Pawn is a thing in America <laughs> where you can, if you have an object you want to get a loan for, you can turn it into someone like me. And it's、uh, basically, I'll give you a loan for your stuff. But I don't do that. I just buy and sell. So most of what I do is gold and silver coins and currency. But I also do collectibles and I do history and the products that I make for the internet. The videos have a lot to do with history. Can you still remember the day you got the album? So this customer reached out to me in early August and said, "I have a book of photos from World War II. They are disturbing." And I thought, well, you know, I see all kinds of stuff from World War II. It's all disturbing. And I, you know, I just didn't really think anything of it. He sent it to me, and I got it the last Monday in August. I think it was August.、Uh, 29th or 8th. The cover is very、uh, elaborate. It's this leather-bound cover with a dragon on it, and you start flipping through, and it's this guy in the war, and you know him and his sailors, sailor friends, and they're drinking and they're having fun and life in the military, and then life in you know Southeast Asia. But then, just a few pages into the book, there's savage photos of. Well, I saw the word Nanking, and I thought, oh my gosh, this might be photos from the Nanking massacre because I majored in Japanese studies in college.、Uh, just the word Nanking, you know, I thought, oh my god, this this is. Something of great historical significance. I can't buy this. This might be expensive. I I don't want this to go in a private collection. This should go in a museum. So I made the video in question, and、um, well, lo and behold, here we are. What was your first reaction when you saw the photos? When I got that book on Monday, and I opened it up, and I got beyond that page, I screamed. I I had a loud verbal reaction. Number one, I was just suddenly so overwhelmed, and I thought, oh my god, what did I sign up for? Like I. Now I have to get this into a museum's hands. This is why it also took three days for me to make that video because I didn't know what to do. I thought, you know, okay, every time I reached out to a museum, they've never taken me seriously, and this is when I had a quarter million followers. So I thought, well, maybe if I make a video that's so sensational, I can finally capture a museum's attention. Yeah, I just I wasn't counting on it being number one in Chinese social media. How much do you know about the history of the Sino-Japanese wars? Yeah, it's it's yeah. a very dark chapter of human history. I mean, all of World War Two is, but you know, this predates、uh, World War Two,、uh, the first Sino-Japanese War, and then again the second one. Why did you decide to post videos about the album? I have never been able to capture a museum's attention, and I have had items that for sure belong in museums.、Um, I've had items from the Holocaust, the German Holocaust, advertised to me. And you know I don't traffic in those. I draw a line. I'll sell most things, but if it's involving a war crime, I won't sell that. That that belongs in a museum. I had never gotten a museum's attention, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to use social media to get someone's attention. If I scream loud enough, maybe someone will look. A lot, a lot of people looked. Can you share some of the feedbacks that you got online, whether positive ones or negative ones? It's it's really a mix. It's overwhelmingly positive.、Um, you know, I've had so many Chinese people reaching out to me, posting on my YouTube, my TikTok, saying thank you. I've gotten emails. I get you know just so many messages of outpouring. I well, maybe it's because I can't read Mandarin. I haven't seen any Chinese person say you did a bad thing.、Uh, it's all positive. So, can you share some of the like comments or actions or moves you remember the most? The best things that I remember was two days after I posted the video on Friday, I had. So many Chinese people stopping by to hug me and cry and give me flower. It was just overwhelmingly powerful.、Uh, that I mean, that was the most just intense interaction I've had. The most positive interaction, the most like life changing interaction. That's what convinced me so much that this belongs in China. Was these people stopping by saying, "No matter what, thank you. The education you have provided here is so important to our history." I've heard that 
you wore like bulletproof vest. Is that true? Yeah, uh, for a couple of weeks. I mean, I was basically hiding in my apartment. I did. I was really afraid um, for a few reasons. Number one, the again, just the, it was so negative what was being said about me. It's like, God, I don't want to blow my head off too. Like that's a really it, it, people were getting really outraged and angry. Uh, I had people messaging me on social media, my address. I don't know how they found it. Uh, I had a few people message me, you know, watch out. Nobody said, I'm going to kill you. I would have reported that. That didn't happen. Uh, but I did have, you know, threats, you know, people saying, watch out, sending me my address. That's pretty scary. And on top of that, I know enough to know that the worst of the worst crazies are the Nanking deniers. They are really dangerous, really aggressive. And so I, I was really worried about that group in particular. Uh, and it it got... Mm -hmm alarming and you know this is america there's a lot of guns there's a lot of crazy people uh so i i bought a bulletproof vest before the or when the pandemic hit in 2020 and i wore it for weeks i'm not wearing it now because it's very uncomfortable and i like i don't think i'm going to get killed over this but yeah it is craziest month of my life um uh, my my mental health took quite a toll i lost a lot of weight i wasn't sleeping um yeah just the 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 mental strain you know i was joking i don't know how donald trump does it being in the media sphere like that and getting all that pressure. Cause I, you know, I, after a week, I was like, I want off this ride. After three days, I wanted off. How's life uh, these days? How's I'm, your I'm life? I'm okay now. Days? I'm a lot better now. I'm, I'll tell you, I'm looking for a therapist. I definitely need to see one. I'm ready to move on. And, you know, I get, I get recognized now in public about this. And, you know, people ask me about it. It's like, just, just ask me about something else. One of my things is cause I'm a writer and, you know, I have good education. If you make a spelling mistake and you're trying to make an argument on the internet, I just don't take it seriously. Cause it's like, you don't, you didn't even take the time to spell something properly. And the amount of people that are attacking me that are just spelling like idiots. It's like, well, pff, you sound smart. Do you regret sharing the stories on social media? No, uh, this was, not, you know, the fact is I provided education. I love educating people. And that's why I'm making these videos. Even if I had to bear the brunt of all this craziness, um, it was, it was totally worth it. It's why I'm here. So I wouldn't do anything differently. But I regret giving anybody false hope that I might have photos of the Nanking massacre that might lead to justice. That I regret. The key is, even though I don't understand you, but you don't understand us, but we are brave enough to speak it out, to say it, to communicate, mm -hmm. and then we can exchange ideas, and then we can know more about different cultures and different different background. I have uh, had a few conversations with people saying that, you know, you, you should be a peacekeeper. We should do something with, um, if I was asked, I would gladly do it. I think it'd be a privilege and an honor. But right now, I think we have a moment with this. I've accidentally created a moment where young Chinese people and young American people are now seeing each other through the lens of social media through this. And that moment is very important because our, our countries right now are having some issues. And I am mm -hmm. I'm so anti-war, I'm so pro-peace, and any kind of a dialogue is constructive. And I just think that this is an opportunity that we have here, and I hope we can continue it, continue dialogue, and continue pursuing peace. I know that you gave the album to the Chinese Consulate General in Chicago. And why did you make that decision? Were there any other options? And is there anyone, like, anyone want to buy it? Yeah, uh, actually, I had a lot of people the day, the two days after the video, a number of people were calling me, making me like very high dollar amount offers. And I was like, did you not see the video? I'm not selling it. Uh, I got it to the consulate general, thanks to one individual who lives here in Minnesota. He is Chinese. He is involved with the some local Chinese organizations here. And he uh, came here, I think came here on Friday, two days after the video. And, you know, he gave me his card and we talked. He said, if you want to give this to China, just let me know. So I called this guy up again and gave me his card. I said, well, hey, you said you have uh, friends in the Chinese government. Can you please give me someone's contact info? And so through him is how I got in contact with the Chinese consulate in Chicago. So it's all thanks to this one individual. How was the day at the consulate? What really threw me, and I said this in a TikTok, when they gave me the gift, they didn't tell me what it was and I didn't ask for it. I didn't know I was getting anything. I didn't, I didn't ask for anything. Uh, it's not, I didn't give it to get something back. I gave it cause I just thought it was the right thing to do. But then they said, we have a gift for you. It is very important. And they presented me with the national gift and they didn't say, this is a national gift. We don't give this to most presidents. They just gave it to me mm -hmm. and, and they're very humble about it. They didn't embellish what it was. They didn't brag about it. They didn't explain it. They just gave it to me and said, it's, it's important take care of it. So, you know, I took it home and I had it here in my store. And I made the video, I posted the video the day that I donated it to him. 
So I got I got home and I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing people saying, do you know what they gave you? No, what they give me? And then I found out what it was. And I, I came running here, Jessica, in the middle of the night. I got an Uber, came flying over here because I was worried somebody was going to steal it. Having the book, keeping the book safe was some spy level stuff. I had friends trading it off in parking lots, no cell phone, because I was so worried about it getting stolen. I, I basically had to do the same thing with this gift. And like, I had to elaborately get it out of the cities and get it into hiding. There is there is one comment I would like to share with you that was in Chinese, uh, but I translated as you can you can pass that processing down to your your sons or your children if they need help in the future. Chinese people will go all out for them. Yeah, I've heard it. Uh, what do they call it? a blood medal? Is a is a term I heard like is in uh, if I'm ever in danger, uh, China will take me and help me. So, yeah, yeah. Let's hope I don't get in trouble. I don't have to cash that one in. <laughs> Incredible experience. But the meeting, again, the meeting though, uh, life-changing. I'll never forget meeting meeting them and, and having that experience. What comes to your mind first when you think of China? The Great Wall. When I hear the word, that's the first thing, just instinctively when I think. And then, okay. and then second is Panda. You know, we have a slant here in America. It's not a very positive one right now because of the tensions between our countries. Uh, I mean, I don't even like American media. I listen to BBC News. That's that's the media, I, I, uh, Western media I subscribe to. So, you know, mm -hmm. as, if, if, as far as opinions about China go coming out of the United States, I try not to listen too much to it because who knows? I haven't been there and I don't know. And there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of negativity. Uh, you have a chance to visit China. Where would you like to go and what would you like to experience? Well, I think the most important thing for me to do is to go to the Nanking Massacre Museum in Nanking. See it, see the museum, uh, because I mean, that's how all this started. And I really do need to go there and, and see it firsthand, uh, drink it in and, and learn for myself. I just I think that's the most constructive place for me to start. To use three words to describe your 2022, what are the three words? Unexpected, overwhelming, and joyous. The year was overwhelming. Uh, it was immensely stressful. I've never endured stress like this in my life. The conclusion was joyous. I've never felt this satisfied uh, about anything ever. And just, I mean, this whole year is just unforgettable through and through and through. Not just this experience. Uh, leading up to it, I mean, I, I business-wise, this has been an incredible year too. So it's it's just been an incredible journey. It's been a lot of work, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this year turned out the way that it did. So are there anything that you would like to say to Chinese netizens? I simply want to say thank you to all of China from the bottom of my heart for standing up for me, for having my back, and for continuing to support me and defend me uh, from when my intentions were called into question to the conclusion of this, uh, the, the support has been overwhelming. So glad I did this and was able to make this connection with Chinese people, especially at a time now, like I said, where there's a lot of turbulence and it's good to have something positive and peaceful happen, something that creates a new dialogue, something that uh, de-escalates. And I really think that this was a de-escalation. <laughs>